Spin it. You want me to spin you? Yeah. yeah. Fast? Yeah. <laughs> Why y'all want to be bad? I'm fat. I'm about to fall off. It's like the bloopers. <laughs> Free bloopers. The bloopers. This is the bloopers? I guess it's the bloopers. Whoa, welcome to the Best Friend Weekend Podcast. This is your man Aldo Nice. Whoa, welcome to the Best Friend Podcast. This is your boy Raj Smooth. Um, and Did I say Best Friend Podcast? Yeah, I mean, contrary podcast? to what Roger just called it, it is called the Best Friend Weekend Podcast. For everyone. Whoa, welcome to the Best Friend Weekend <laughs> Podcast. This is your boy Raj Smooth. Yeah, man, and it's Aldo Nice. And this oh. is your boy Aldo Nice. <laughs> How y'all doing? How, how y'all doing out there, man? Um, yeah, best friend weekend. Get your best friend weekend merch. Um, we got we got dad hats in all shapes and sizes online. Um, I, I looked in the in the in the storage facility the other day, and I was like, we got a lot more than I even thought we had. So we got hats for days. Um, we got big and tall site. hats too. I think we for big and tall heads, cutting for people yeah. with big tall heads, tank so, heads. Uh, we got tank heads. Yeah, mm-hmm. we got the water heads. We got the tank heads. We got some for football heads. Um, we got a few for little bitty heads, peanut heads. Um, we got some that'll fit Stewie and Hey Arnold. Yeah, that's that. I, but I think that's football heads. I think those would be considered football heads. I mean, maybe um, they just needed clarification. Oh, so the Stewie head would be a football head. Um, you know, so we got we got hats for all varieties they're adjustable um one size fits all for some but then we also have those other varieties so make sure you look it up man it's been um a crazy week man i I guess i would say this is the um this is me like recuperating and rehabilitating after last week's um drunken stupors that we were in for um aldo and his birthday weekend partying because it went down raj we missed you out here man i apologize no, you don't. You don't. I'll care. be there next time. I do care. I do <laughs> care. Don't say I don't care. I care. <laughs> it was. I it should have been there. It was great fun, man. It was great, great fun. But um, if I, mean, I could have been there, I would have been there. And I think I agree with that. I think I, I, um, I believe that. So I mean, it's been a the things that has been going on in these streets this week. We're just gonna hop right into some of these subjects and kind of talk a little bit about it. So last night, um, if I wasn't on like the tail end of my, um, you know birthday week festivities but i guess it's a whole birthday month i guess i got the whole month to turn up but um i would have probably went to to the concert last night hove jay-z was in um yeah he used to move snowflakes by the oz he was in um h-town yesterday i want to say the toyota center everywhere i looked on every um social media people were uploading pictures that said jay-z 444 tour so, um, or 444, I don't even know how it's like accurately, um, said in words, but, um, yeah, 444 tour and everybody was in the house. I don't know if I would have went. Roger, you a concert person? I'm not a concert person, but I do think that there's certain people that you have to see before you die. Hmm. Like the ring. You have to see the ring before you die. Seven days. I, I don't know. The, the ring, the movie? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when. In the ring, the, I don't want to spoil it in for anybody else. Okay, but yeah, that, that, that's part of the, you have to see the ring before you die. No, I anyway. just think that, there, you know, there's certain people, like, you know, if Jay-Z comes, I'm not a huge Beyonce fan, but I guess if I have the opportunity to go to a Beyonce concert, I would probably go, you know, if it was cheap. If it, I'd go just because it's Beyonce, you know, and I'm probably I'll never get the opportunity to see Beyonce in my life in her prime again. Um, there's some I, people that I, I'll have to see, you know. I mean, from a from a from a society standpoint, there's also some people that I have to see from my standpoint too. Okay, so, so it's it's interesting because I would say that um, I feel that way about sports more than music. Like I feel that way, like um, like I, I feel like I missed out because I never saw Kobe, but I definitely made it a point to make sure I saw LeBron. I've seen LeBron a couple of times, but like LeBron, Peyton Manning, I wanted to make sure I saw certain people, Reggie Bush, like in their prime. Like I want to see these people carry on. And do their thing. So I get your, I get that that um that whole idea of it's something you want to do. But I don't think I gotta like rush to see Jay Z before I die because I feel like Jay Z is gonna be performing until he's um sixty. 
Maybe. But you just won't get... He's still got some cool to him. Eventually, <laughs> Jay-Z will like, lose some luster. And you know how whenever... Like, right now. Right I'm, now. I'm listening. Right now. Listen. Right now. If Elton John throws a concert anywhere in America, it's going to sell out. Will you be there? No. No, you won't. So... Because to me, he's like probably, well, to me, he's lost some luster in my age group, or he's never even had luster in my <laughs> That's age That's what I was going to say. But I like, he ever I don't think I'm going to want to see Jay Z try to like resurrect his career when he's 60. I'd rather see him while he still got some cool factors. Well, to okay. That leads me to like another um, idea. I mean, just, just, I think the last three concerts I've been to, definitely the last two I can remember right off the top of my head were Wale and Meek Mill. Um, I can't think of who the third concert I would have been to as of late, but um, Wale and Meek Mill. How about yourself? What were like the last two or three concerts you've been to? Last three concerts. So um, funny, we're talking about it just this past weekend. I don't know if it was Saturday or Sunday. I went to the Jay-Z concert. In Denver? Uh, in Denver, which okay. was the best concert I've ever been to in my life. This podcast so brought to you I, by The Rock. So I'm glad that I got I got a chance to see him, you know, and and enjoy him. Um, the, and then I went to a Boogie with a hoodie concert in Denver and I went to see Big Sean also in Denver. Big Sean with his clothes on? Big or? Sean, not, not nude. <laughs> <laughs> huge inside joke. <laughs> no pun huge, intended. <laughs> huge inside boy, of your joke. Boy, Big Sean. Boy, I'm Big Sean. <laughs> I mean, if that's the question they ask. Okay. Well, so you've been... You, you were at the um, you were at the Hove concert, so and you said it was the best concert ever. Tell us about it. Best concert ever. I, you know, how there are certain people. So like you know, you look at Jay Z from afar, and he's such a mogul, and he's a big, he's like an icon. And you, I, you know, I, I I'm not gonna lie, I, I kind of judge the book by its cover. I, I usually don't like to follow icons. I like the kind of independent people, like just the people that kind of just it's not that big. Um, but Jay Z seemed like the coolest person in the world. And it was more so like I was, of course, we all know the hits, you know, and he, that's what he performed, all the hits. Uh, did he, four, did four, he reintroduce four. himself? Allow me to that. reintroduce myself. Every single hit, Big Pimpin', every single hit he did, um, My Niggas in Paris, all that. Did all, every single hit that you know Jay-Z for. I in front of that, but, you know. I got my niggas in Paris and they're going gorillas. Huh? <laughs> this is called so I'm saying, in anyway, uh, probably ahead. the name of the song is niggas in Paris, but I just sang a piece, an excerpt of the song. <laughs> I said, I said, I got my niggas in Paris. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> that's why they got rewind. Yeah, so right. um, just rewind it and see what I said and see who's wrong. Cause maybe I was wrong. But anyway, <laughs> um, so he sang every single big song. So that was cool. It wasn't like I went to listen to his album release because I, you know, I don't want to listen to his new stuff. But his commentary, just the the stuff he was saying was like very uplifting and it was just very cool. Like it was some stuff that I, w- I would want to hear Jay-Z say. Okay, question. I'm going to go back to go forward. I'm going to go backwards to go forward. The question I have is, you said you wanted to still see Jay-Z while he was kind of in his, um like, well, before he's like, he's he's too far gone where he still has got some cool to him. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a couple of things. One of the best concerts I ever have been to, definitely barring none were Kanye in his prime, prime Kanye, which you really like dude was on the stage making a beat like during live with a, um, with like, I don't know, what do you call that thing? Just a drum machine, a beat machine. And he was up there with just like the, the four light beat machine and just making it happen. So that was one of the best, but the other best concerts I've been to were, Let's let's leave Usher out of this. Usher was fantastic, but it was New Edition, and it was Maze and Frankie Beverly. And the point about it is, the New Edition concert I went to was probably um, I don't know um, eight nine years ago, which still means New Edition was in their like late thirties, early forties. Um, new Edition is old now, like they're I guess whatever in their fifties. You can't tell me that a New Edition concert right now wouldn't be just as cracking as a New Edition concert. In like, whatever, 90, 98. And even more so, I think it's better when they're not making new music. Like, I would rather see Jay-Z when he's not making new music. Because he's not going to try to force any songs on us that we're like, oh, that's the new Jay-Z that, oh, I don't even know the words to that. And it's I really don't even like that song that much anyway. Just play that big pimping. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like right, like at this point, you run the risk of him going up there and playing something from 444 that I might not even really remember or... Magna Carla, Holy Grill, that I might not even really remember every song on there. 
but in eight years, catch Jay Z, it might be all, it might be that whole catalog, that twenty twenty five songs that we like. Oh yeah, that's that whole. Maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe you're right. Uh, maybe maybe he has something wrong with his vocal cords in twenty twenty five. You know, like there's a whole <laughs> like bunch of Maze, like Frankie Beverly, right? right? Okay, yeah. And so, and I'll be honest with you, like I'm 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 cool with the new edition thing. I don't think, like I, I think that there's a difference between a concert and a rap concert. Yeah. So like, there's concerts where you know, like R and B, like you know, like you can feel, like you feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you you might even feel a little emotional, like at an R and B concert or a pop concert or something like that. Well, if Jay Z would have played Song Cry, I think I would have felt emotional. He didn't play. I don't think he played Song Cry. I don't remember him playing that. But <laughs> Jay Z, where Jay Z, where I I didn't know what I was getting myself into. So yeah, I did run the risk of him playing some songs that I would <laughs> I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Right, of course, but. The tickets were twelve dollars. Okay, we're about to get into that. <laughs> so extremely cheap, <laughs> extremely cheap. So that's one thing that gave that's me the okay. opportunity to go. Okay, that's an opportunity to see Jay Z. And plus, living in Louisiana for you know the thirty years that I lived in Louisiana, if I wanted to see Jay Z, most likely I would have either had to overpay at the Cajun Dome once in a lifetime or go and see him all the way in New Orleans. This concert was. 15 minutes away from my house on the train. So it was okay. very accessible. It dropped us off at the front door. It's very accessible. And I did, like I said, run the risk of him playing something I didn't know, but he didn't. He played everything that I knew. Okay, let's circle back. You talk, you you topped on it. That's what I was going to talk about. Um, I went and I did a little Googling. And um, I mean, honestly, one of um, one of the homeboys' this podcast is brought to you by Paul, um, the, the marketing director for um, Rice Basketball. He hit me up last night about 530 because um, Jay-Z was in, like I said, he was in Houston last night. And he was like, Jay-Z tickets for $30 the day of, question mark. What's up with that? And I was like, hey, man, I'm teaching tonight. I can't really mess with it. I'm not with the shits. But um, if I wasn't, I mean, that's what I've been hearing, that the tickets were kind of, were pretty cheap. So he was talking about $30 seats, like lower bowl, like damn near on the floor. like, And um, it, it was just kind of amazing to me. So I started doing some Googling. Got on Uproxx. They said the leftover Tickets and low prices on the secondary market were all a part of the master plan to beat scalpers and get tickets into the hands of the fans. That's what Live Nation is saying. That's how they're trying to spin it. Um, Complex said they had floor floor seats at that Denver concert that you went to for 69 bucks. And on StubHub and SeatGeek, tickets were less than $10. And in some of the stops, the shows were um, more, like more than halfway empty. So... Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Why do you think that is? You were there. You said I mean, it was awesome. Would, no, it was awesome. Um, I think it. I think so. So here's the thing. Whenever so Vic Mensa was the opener for it, so that's a great opener, right? Vic Mensa's Ish. opener for Jay Z. Ish. I, Vic, just, I mean, okay, Vic of course, it was probably a Kanye better. West. Vic Mensa was probably Kanye a better West, interview than a than a rap, than a, a no. you know, than okay. a concert. Look, so Vic Mensa, Vic Mensa is a pretty like he did pretty good, but what I what I noticed. Um, that the concert did seem like it was rather empty, uh-huh. but it was also dark when Jay-Z came. It was a little bit, you know, the, the, the lights and the, 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 not the lights, I guess the lights are the lack thereof, but like the show, like the fireworks yeah, were yeah. all there for Jay-Z. Vic Mensa kind of had a very limited amount of that lights and fireworks and whatnot. So whenever Jay-Z performed, it was rather dark. When Jay-Z got on there, it, people definitely sat in their seats. So it filled, it filled up more than when Vic Mensa was on stage. But I think if I had to look at it, if I had to really, really try to understand why these tickets were so cheap, was I really think that Jay Z can afford to throw cheap concerts? I think that that's what he. That sounds okay. To okay, so that goes with along with one of these. Um, I'm just I'm gonna call it a hoax. It might be fake news. It might be reality. But people online are trying to spin it that it's an elaborate hoax because. He can't be like making music like his last four 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 album and telling people, you know, what's better than having a good a big car credit, like and telling people to save money and telling people to do this and then market tickets at like one hundred and twenty bucks, because then that kind of is counter to what you're talking about. So it's instantly going to have people having memes saying you're telling us to save money, but now you're asking us for one hundred and fifty dollars to come to watch you on the show. I don't I can't buy that, man. I, I, I just I can't buy that. I feel like that's kind of far fetched. I don't know. What do you think, Raj? Do you think that that's? I mean, that's kind of what you were saying just then. 
No, I, I really, I'm, I'm actually looking at some of these tickets, and I know in Anaheim, California, you could get tickets for six dollars. Yeah. Granted, they were probably nosebleed, but um, I think it was what it was. I don't think that Jay Z's Jay Z's definitely have, hadn't lost. He's he didn't lose any luster. Okay. So I, I don't think Jay Z lost luster. I don't think Jay Z's tickets are six dollars because nobody likes Jay Z anymore. I think they're six dollars because he wants them to be six dollars. Well, we talked about this maybe on the second or third podcast. You probably don't remember this because I barely remember it. I mean, we've been doing this for man. Man, this podcast is brought to you by Best Friend Weekend. Man, this shit, we got some stick to it, man. Some stay power going on right now. But I remember a long time ago we had a pod and we were talking about when Jay Z inked that deal with Live Nation for like two hundred million to tour for the next like ten years or something. So my point is, it's probably not affected Jay Z's bottom line no matter how much the tickets cost because he's still on contract, quote unquote. He found a new way to get this money. This concert money, man. He basically said, hey, man, I'm going to tour for you for X amount of years. You're going to pay me this amount no matter how much the concerts um, we make off of the concert. So at the end of the day, we know Jay-Z is not suffering from this because of that deal. But maybe the people at Live Nation, maybe some other ones are. And that's probably why they're trying to spin it. Um, Maybe it's a senior citizen discount. What do you think about that? Since Jay-Z is um, could be, could be, 60, but this is, um... 60 years old. So Jay Z's been playing shows on his latest tour for less than a week, and it's already the highest grossing tour of his solo career. Um, so this four 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 tour is the highest bullshit. grossing tour of his solo career. Bullshit. Why is that I call, bullshit? I call it bullshit. Why? Just because I mean you can use so many different you can use so many different um different numbers and different statistics to say what you wanted to say. I just can't believe that. You're not going to tell me that a concert where the tickets are going for 10 bucks and it's halfway sold out are bigger than some concerts Jay-Z might have did 10 years ago when he was selling out Madison Square with the Black Album. Like, um, or tours that he was doing overseas. I just, I just can't, um, I But can't. they're not, they're not all halfway sold out. I mean, I'm sure if Jay-Z throws a concert in New York, it's all the way sold out. Well, they said, they, the they said that they're holding, they said they're having trouble selling tickets for to the... Who, what they said they're having trouble selling tickets to the um to the Brooklyn show. That's what that I heard. That sucks. That sucks. And they'll probably just start giving them away. Maybe so. Um, but another thing that I heard was that um that they said, and I mean it's an interesting thought too, that Jay Z probably isn't big enough to fill up thirty arenas in two months like his successors, Drake. And Kendrick. But it's been masked by the fact that his last two tours featured Justin Timberlake and Beyonce. Basically, they're saying that Jay-Z has never been a huge draw in like live arenas filling out where people are just coming out in droves to see Jay-Z. He's never been that guy. Hmm. It's always been because he's had a Justin Timberlake or a Beyonce or I don't know, Jigga Kelly, not guilty. He was with R. Kelly. I don't know what he was, but he always so had let me give you something. Act. Let me give you something else. Another, so a little bit more food for thought. Um, the the so we we it's so funny how every single damn podcast I'm bringing up Gerard Carmichael. You know, you, I mean, and eight, that's is that is that listen, who Gerard Carmichael said that? That's what listen. I was thinking. No, but check this out. Go ahead. So on Gerard Carmichael eight. Yeah. You know how special it was special to me because he had people all around him. He had a circle, basically. He he was on a square and he had a circle around him. It's like well, Bukaki. In do- anyway, so <laughs> in doing in doing research, Jay Z has more ticket inventory now to sell because he's doing it on a circular stage. So you know, if you go to a typical concert, they that build a like stage. A no, that's not oh. that. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I don't even like that you said that. When you go to a typical concert at an arena, they usually block off seats, right, for the stage, because the stage would take up some of those seats. You can't be behind the stage, right? No, I get the logistics. I, I don't see. A, I don't see how you're rolling your eyes on this one. Like literally, but, you cannot sit behind the stage. So there's okay. a whole section of but of seating. Every that's but that gone. big circular obelisk that that's in the middle of the floor. Usually, people can sit there. What do you mean? The area on the floor where he's performing at. People can usually yeah, sit I, there. Right. And so there's still that area to sit on the floor all around the stage. No, all not around the stage. Three, 360 degrees <laughs> of stage of, of seating. So there was not there was no blocked off seats in the in the um 
in the Denver Stadium, in which was the name of it, in the Pepsi Center. No blocked off seating. His stage was in the middle of the floor, and there was people sitting all around it, 360 degrees, and um, and everywhere up top. I mean, so I don't see how you can you can say I'm I'm reading it right now that there's just more ticket inventory than a than a typical okay, concert. Yes, but I still feel like that's that's just kind of uh, um, explaining things, explaining why he can't. I mean, but if he's that guy, then he's going. You telling me that if Drake was sitting in a circular stage, he wouldn't have sold out that arena? I'm I'm not saying that, and and that's I don't know what type of argument that is. One day I'm gonna figure out that word, but I'm only giving you re like a bunch of reasons. Like I mean, every, I think it's all ex- a part of it. And is is reason another word for excuses? No, I think it's just all a part of it. Like everything going into why the concerts are you know Boo-boo. sold the way they're sold. I think that that just goes that goes a part of it. So you, I see what you're saying. You're saying that oh, okay, if there's more seats, then there should be more tickets sold. If that's Jay Z, if that's your guy, if that's God MC Jay Hover. Yeah, that's the guy. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But I'm just saying, no, I just the tickets cheap. I don't know why. I don't know why people aren't there. I mean, that's that's just something so they we have say. to figure out another day, man. But like. I don't want I don't want to spend too much too 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 much of the podcast talking about Hove. I mean, because I didn't go to the concert. You know, I wasn't invited. Nobody told me let's go to the concert. But hey, uh, it is what it. Hey, Al, it's your birthday. Let's go to the Jay Z concert. Nobody even said that. You know what? This podcast is brought to you by people who love me. Um, but next on the next on the list of things to talk about, really quickly, the the weekly Tyrese report. Um, yeah, man, they was calling him Ly- They was calling him what? Lyries? No, Cryries. Now they calling him Lyries because they said um, he lied about Will Smith. Tell me, like, made a post and said Will Smith actually had donated five billion dollars. So I don't know. Roger is a billion more than a billion. That's a good question. Absolutely not. Nothing's more than a billion. Okay, but a I'm so, is I, an imaginary number, and the dots or the zeros are so small that they're dots. So, so it's dot dot dot. So, and that goes on forever. It's like an ellipse, and that's that's the part that I'm thinking about, right? A billion seems like it was enough that you know Will could have gave him a billion. He could have gave him a billion, and he would have no, he, he would have got away with it. No one gives away a, 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 that much money, never. <laughs> Especially to one person. You don't ever hear, yeah, baby gave Lil Wayne five million dollars just because he loved him. No, he gave him a kiss on the mouth. You know, like that's that's. I mean, maybe that's what maybe you're get. maybe he gave Tyrese five thousand at least a thousand times. I don't understand why, you know, I feel like, I feel like, uh, I feel like people like Will Smith, if they want to help, if they really want to help, if they really feel like inclined to help, just start a GoFundMe. <laughs> you know, Jay-Z, I mean, uh, J.J. Watt laid out the, the blueprint on, on how to make, uh, how to make money without giving out your You own. putting some money on, um, on, on Tyrese? In his I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But, okay, so, all right. So, I don't know if you saw on Facebook now, you can actually... Post a video and then donate to charity. It's weird. Mm. I don't know. King Kiran put these videos up and donate to the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And people donated like $10, $15 here and there. That's King Kiran. Will Smith does it for no reason. Or just say to help out my friend Tyrese, I bet you somebody's going to donate just because it's Will Smith. Yeah. I, I think I agree with the, the whole bigger sentiment that Will Smith ain't giving um, Tyrese $5 billion just to be. And it's a bad look. To even say some craziness like that, that's... why did that? Why is that even a story? Like, wh- why Will Smith? Why? Because Tyrese that story? posted it. He, he said, "Thank you." Well, then Tyrese losing his mind. <laughs> I mean, but that's what everybody was under the impression of anyway. That Tyrese was losing his mind. You post some stuff like that that turns out to be, and it was weird because he was like, "They gave me five million to float me," and the only stipulation was I stay off of social media. And he's posting this on social media. Like, we'll get to social media in a while. This might have been a good little segue to that. But we'll get to that at the end because I think that's that's going to be the um, prime prime conversation uh, for this podcast. We're giving some social media rules out later. later. So uh, make sure y'all stick around for that. Uh, but while we on some hip-hop, let's talk Meek. This is sad for Meek, man. I, I, I feel bad because I think we've really come around to the fact that we've we're liking and respecting what Meek Mill has been doing and kind of coming back into the game in a way. Um, two to four years for violating his probation. Um, man. They said that um, the two charges where he violated his prob- probation, both of those charges were dropped, stemming from, I don't know exactly what those two charges were, 
but both charges were were dropped and the judge still went ahead and revoked his probation and gave him two to four years um thoughts on me it's a dirty world man it's a dirty world um did you did you hear you heard the vendetta right I mean, man, you, I got, you told me some I got nothing this but notes on the vendetta, man. What you heard about the vendetta, though? So the vendetta is that the judge Janice Brinkley, um, Genesee Brinkley, it's something like that because it's a it's a black chick, Janice with a big forehead, Brinkley, Brinkley, big forehead and and lace front. <laughs> um, oh, you looking at a picture of her, obviously. No, I'm not looking at a picture of her. I just, I just know all Janae says have lace fronts. Um, <laughs> so what you prefer, Dookie braids or lace fronts? Uh, man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like Dookie braids more than lace fronts any I'm, day of the do, week. Do you know how? Look, look. Okay, all right. Look, just side note. Do you know how long it takes for Dookie braids? Like for for yeah. for Jamel Hill Dookie braids? Do you know how yeah. long that takes? The micro long? braids. Let's call how them by what they're take? called. Micro braids. How long? How long does it take? Micro braids. Pro- it, a girl will go get micro braids at like nine in the morning, and it'd be three African women in a chair. I just like, want to know how long house, it takes. And they will oh, three women braiding her hair, and it'll probably take about five six hours. Okay, so I don't know where you why you got to split it up. One person does dookie braids, and no, um, multiple you go to, you people go to your can beautician. do micro braids. Continue. Who goes? To, I mean, I never been to an African person's house, but anyway, so um, <laughs> just say they go to the American person beautician, and it's gonna take fourteen hours, and then it takes another fourteen to take out. So I guess I appreciate the time, but anyway, Genesee um, Brinkley told Meek Mill or whatever suggested to meek mill that he she should leave rock nation and sign with his friend his boy sign with yeah sign with i thought he was with rose though but and you know that's that's what i didn't understand but i I think they said rock nation is his management so maybe he's like under contract rapping with 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 um dream chasers and rose but maybe that's like his management team i don't know but that's the first thing i thought when i saw that for like yeah, I don't, I didn't, I don't know, I don't know about that either. As soon as I said the word Rock Nation and Meek Mill in the same, it sentence, sounded said, weird. Wait, hold on, I thought it was Dream Chasers. Yeah, not Dream Chasers, MMG. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't know about that either. Maybe we're not well versed, but that's why that like it never be like you need to sign with my homeboy. Yeah, sign with my homeboy, or, or I'm sending you to jail, straight up. <laughs> that's a vendetta for your hands. Did you hear the other vendetta? Uh, not nah, tell me. She asked him to re-record "Boys to Men" on bended knee, and shot her out on the song. And he said he started laughing, and she was like, "No, nah, I'm serious." Like in chambers when they were talking about like stuff that he needs to be doing, and the lawyer, um, uh, uh, Joe Takapina. I don't know how to say his name. I tried my best. Um, he's basically the one Takapina. <laughs> Taco penis, not um, not burrito penis. Taco penis. Um, basically, he's he's giving us the lowdown on what uh, Genesee it was saying over there, man. They said she actually pulled up on his community service outings, like whenever he had to do community service, she pulled up and was like, "I want to make sure you hear." Like law, judges don't do that. Like she's re- literally has a, um, a vendetta against against me. I think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, now nah, she's got a crazy infatuation with Jay Z. I mean, with uh, with Meek, it's, and it's it's crazy. It's it uh, it makes no sense. Do you know the probation? She obviously that he's is fighting? familiar with with him. The, like the she's probation, obviously, like she's been following him for a while. No, absolutely, absolutely. The probation that he's fighting is from a 2008 trial. Like he had five years probation in 2008. He was supposed to be done in 2013. It is damn near 2018. And they're still trying to prosecute him for the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I think she probably is like a small court. And it's like, that's her little claim to fame. That's how she in the mix. By messing with Meek. Wow, that's wild. Well, uh, shout out Meek. Rest in, uh, not rest in peace. Uh, free Meek. Free Meek Mill. Free Meek Mill. Get your, get your free Meek Mill hats. <laughs> at uh, Best Friend Weekend. Dot com dot biz slash free meek mail. Man, you you be saying these things. I I should probably be dropping this hat this week. Um, free meek mail and free Leangelo ball, man. 
This podcast is brought to you by Big Baller Brand. Leangelo Ball is a disciple of uh, who was the guy that? Damn it, who was the guy that stole the crabs? Jameis Winston. Mm-hmm. Leangelo Ball. Whenever Leangelo Ball make it to the NBA, he gonna get drafted to a Florida team, and him and Jameis Winston gonna steal crabs for the rest of their life. For the rest of their life, they gonna steal crabs. <laughs> I don't know what they stole, man. What do you think they stole? I think they stole like some little, like some little Chinese trinkets. You know, like man, you you go to the you go to the you go to the Chinese place. You know, like like you go to let's say you go to Festival International in Lafayette, what I'm familiar with. You go there and they just you know the Chinese people got all kind of stuff. They got Versace's, <laughs> Gucci belts. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what they stole. Yeah, I, I have no clue. I thought it would have been some little technology, like some. Some next gen stuff that's in China that them boys. Do you know their punishment? They're on twenty days house arrest, and them boys can't never go back to China. Like barred from the country for life. No China for cool. you. Cool, cool. <laughs> Tim, right. Tim, Tim would um Tim would pull his hair. Graf star no, never Tim make would, it. Tim would a Tim would appeal. Well. It got me thinking because Tim said when he was living out there, this podcast is brought to you by Graf Star, but Tim said that when he was living out there. That everywhere he went, they thought he was like a professional athlete because he was like, it's nothing but five foot three um, Chinese people walking around in China. And you walk around, if you like five, eight or whatever, you like a celebrity. Them boys is like six, five, six, eight. Cutting, how you think you go still and nobody going to be looking at you? Like, nobody that's literally, they already looking at you. That's literally like if we were in the United States in a seven foot eight motherfucker just walked in the store and it was taking shit. Like, come on, man. We know it's What you. do you think they stole? So, like some technology, some beats or something, man. Like something, like some little. Nah, they, you can't steal beats. They stole something like tech, some some electronics is what I'm saying is what they stole, man. Like something. Something jailbroken. I don't know. <laughs> something jailbroken. I don't know. Uh, yeah, them Tim Beats, huh? They might right? have stole something like that. The ones that work for a week. That kind of shit. <laughs> I, I mean, want to know. I can't wait till it come out because if it's crabs, I'm losing my mind. And then his daddy then was out there, man. I mean, LeVar, whatever. I mean, they shouldn't have did it. It's stupid, but it's not like a major crime. It's not like it's not like Officer um, Higgins need to be after him. Like, them, them boys just out there making it happen, like doing some stupid 19-year-old stuff. That boy drives like right. a Lamborghini. Didn't they buy him like a Lamborghini on the little show? So here's how I don't. So here's how I really feel. I don't watch the show, but here's how I really feel. You know, Lavar Ball played in the NBA. Obviously, got a solid foundation. I'm not saying he made a whole lot of money in his career, but he probably got a nice little foundation from his NBA I don't his think basketball he play, career. I don't think he, Lavar he Ball didn't play played that, in the NBA. I'm pretty damn sure Lavar Ball didn't play in the NBA. Lavar Ball played like one year in the NBA. He had to. No, he played college basketball and averaged two points a game in college. I'm actually reading right he here that might have played Ball, in the NFL. Lavar Ball actually got drafted. It was Hakeem Olajuwon, Lavar Ball, and then Michael Jordan. <laughs> he, was, he was the one person that got drafted. Him and Sam Bowie. You know what? Funny enough, Lavar Lavar Ball did play in the NFL. <laughs> did you know that? That's what huh? I just told you. No, but you knew that. Yeah, he played like tight end or DN or something. Wow. Go with LeVar Ball. I hope he didn't look like Draymond Green at Michigan State. Um. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> tight so, end. Uh, whatever. Yeah, I still, I still think. So, okay. I, I saw that. Well, okay. Forget LeVar Ball. They got a nice house. But forget LeVar Ball. Let's go with the fact that he got a brother that probably just signed for multi-million dollars. We can yeah. find out how much. Multi-million dollars. LeAngelo Ball don't have to steal nothing probably never had to steal anything in his life but he was probably with some kids that was a little bit rougher than him exactly. and he just was following suit mm-hmm. he just was doing as the romans do you know exactly no i complete completely agree with that that um that synopsis of the situation that's what took place he was around some kids who was out there trying to make it happen and he was like trying to be one of the guys and, yeah that's um, all and he doesn't cool. realize who he is you gotta realize who he is you know sometimes um you got to understand, um, like, when, when all eyes are on you, you the biggest ticket and you the one who can't mess up. That's kind of like thinking about that Meek Mill thing. Like, the first thing when Meek Mill, um, they said he was going back to jail, 
um, Blue texted me and was like, man, where is Fall Guys at, man? Where is Homeboys at who could take that charge? Like, you definitely need somebody who could take that charge. Like, you can't let LiAngelo get in trouble. One of them boys should have copped to being like, nah, it was me. You know what I mean? Off top. Yeah. LiAngelo ain't had nothing to do with it. It was just me and old boy. Because that's the meal ticket. Even and if LiAngelo you know, might be able to... LiAngelo might be able to pass, but Meek Mill wasn't getting past that judge. <laughs> no, she that judge was going to get Meek regardless. Like, she's trying to smash. Like, she wants to smash him. And she and he's not... He ain't, he ain't with it. <laughs> so the no. judge definitely wants to smash Meek, dog. Like, that is not even a question, dog. <laughs> All right, man. Switching gears. Last night, I, I, or maybe night before last. It's two nights ago. The best documentary in the history of the ESPN 30 for 30 series. I don't know. I'm, that's that's saying a lot. ESPN 30 for 30 is my favorite shit. 30 for 30 podcast, 30 for 30 like TV. You get some good ass stories. That Marcus Dupree was dope. That Benji was the shit. But um, last night, <laughs> Ric Flair. Woo! Nature Boy. The Nature Boy, man. The Styling Nature Boy documentary was off the chain, man. Raj, let me ask you this question right off the top. Was you a WCW or a WWF kid growing up? Definitely WWF. And I was a WWF kid as well. But they talked about why. Like in that documentary, they were basically like that WCW was like a regional um, show that was promoted to like the working man and the every man to watch. Absolutely my grandfather's favorite was WCW. He watched WCW all the time. He wasn't on my grandmother. WWF. My funny enough, my grandmother was a was a wrestling fan, and she was one hundred percent WCW. It was marketed to way. to grown ups. They said yeah, it was WWF almost, it, was marketed to children, and that's and looking why, back on it, <laughs> looking back on it, WWF was very very colorful. Cartoon WCW, yes. right? WCW was was more you know toned down colors. You know? No, you're right. The, like the a lot of silvers. Were, a lot I of, remember the ropes in like WCW being either black. Or like just like a solid color, right? And yeah, WWF, they were like, gray, they were like, like blue just... and red, and like they were these vibrant colors. Yeah, everything, everything else was, it was it was, was vibrant. Yeah, isn't that funny? No, it, isn't that, that funny? <laughs> what? I'm just I'm uh, like this is the first time that I've ever thought about the difference between WCW and WWF. No, it's real. Like, like and when they said it on the, on that's why that's why that documentary was the shit because it makes you think about a lot of things from your childhood that you're like, dang, I didn't even. I didn't even think that. And there's like a lot of um so they were they were doing comparisons between Ric Flair and um Hulk Hogan. And a lot of like people who are a little older than us, maybe that maybe maybe five to ten years older than us, um, so they were a little bit older at the time. They were saying stuff like, Man Wait, 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 wait. So if they're five to ten years older than us, they were still five to ten years older than us back in the day too? More, more than likely. Saying? More okay. like, all right, cool. just making sure. <laughs> Checking your math. <laughs> they, they, I mean, they were just making points that, man, Hulk Hogan was cool or whatever, but I didn't feel Hulk Hogan. I felt Ric Flair. Like, I felt Ric Flair was living the life that he was talking about, and Hulk Hogan was a big cartoon character. Um, but, Brutus but, the Barber Beefcake. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. Now, I don't watch a lot of wrestling. Now, I do have some friends that are still into wrestling. Shout out uh, Clarence and, and Reg. No, I'm not really. Not I'm not Ridge. really in a, That's Clarence why Clarence and Ridge. and Ridge don't know James Harden is a point guard because they watch. <laughs> they still watch choreograph wrestling. wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I hope they hear this. So anyway, <laughs> shout out to them. But anyway, so um, you shit. don't. So anyway, <laughs> I threw your head off. <laughs> See, you always throw you my head off. That. Fucking interrupt. You me don't watch time. wrestling, but I don't watch wrestling now. But I do like I went, and the reason why I don't watch it is because it's not as cartoony as it used to be. Mm. Like people got their real names. Like dudes be like John Smith, you know, or John, John Cena. Cena, or John Cena, or uh, or you know, Bill Bill Bradley. Like just people be just normal names. <laughs> why, right after, like, so the last generation of the people who had their like The Rock, and they were still like Stone Cold. It was like The Undertaker. Those were still characters. That that's what I want. Kane, raising Canes. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I want. <laughs> but now it's like I Randy. Want... No, it's like Randy Orton and Seth Randy Rollins. Randy Orton. You're right. No, that that Kobe yeah. Kofi Kingston. Yeah. Like I don't. I want. I want. <laughs> that's funny. Macho Man Randy that. Savage. Who? Yeah, slip, snap into a Slim Jim. All that being crazy <laughs> on the stage. You know. Uh, Sid Vicious, Sid Vicious. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying. But back in the gal, that's the difference between 
like when we were kids though, like WCW was like stunning Steve Austin, not Stone Cold. Um, Dustin Rhodes, not Gold Dust. Like, you know what I mean? All of those people were they were pretty much. And as I'm looking at like my favorites, they were pretty. There was only one one cartoon character in WCW. We're gonna get to that in a sec. Let's just get to it right now. Shit, I like this conversation. We ain't talked about wrestling in a long time. Who are your favorite three WCW wrestlers? Number one of all time, WCW. Now, WCW is a little bit harder for me. But number one of all time was when Bill Goldberg came out. Okay. And just speared everybody. Okay. Number one WCW. Absolutely. Okay. That's, that's, um, that's fine. I'm going with the whole... In- nope. You know what? I'm going to use that one for my third one. My second favorite WCW re- wrestler was Sting when he was colorful. Okay. Whenever before he was goth, and that's absolutely and then, who I was gonna say was the colorful cartoon character in WCW. It was only Sting. Go. It was Sting. Like, Sting was it. <laughs> he used to do woo. He used to do that too. Yeah. So, uh, so Sting, and then uh, my third is the entire NWO Red. <laughs> okay, you kind of cheating a little bit. The, and the, you talk about the Wolf Pack. Them boys were sweet. The Too Wolf sweet. Pack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so honestly, for me, Sting was number Sting was number three. If we're gonna count back from three, two, one, Sting was number three. I was a huge fan of the Four Horsemen. Um, specific- I mean, what I mean, is this British Bulldog? No, there were so many there iterations. No- there were so many okay. iterations of the Four Horsemen. The give one me, I'm talking the about is Ric Flair, Tully Blanchard, who has to be from like. Lafayette. He's from New Iberia. <laughs> he has to be from New Iberia. Generate. Right. Koto. Koto. Koto, um, yeah. Ric Flair, Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson, and Ole Anderson, or Arn Anderson and Lex Luger. I don't remember who was like the first, but Lex Luger was with him. Like, that was, I, I was a big fan of the Four Horsemen because Four Horsemen used to like kick a lot of ass. But Arn Anderson was my favorite in um, the Four Horsemen because he was just like, I like the way he wrestled. Like, he was like, the technical wrestler. I like people who do little technical moves. Cutting. And but my favorite of all time in WCW was Ron Simmons. Cutting. He became Farouk in all in like later and when he went to WWF. Ron Simmons was a black swole cat who used to give boys the blues. Cutting. Ron Simmons was my favorite. Cutting. But I mean, like you said, WCW had dumb shit like the TV cha- championship where you had to beat a nigga in 15 minutes and if you didn't beat him before TV went to commercial, you lost. <laughs> like, the match was over, cut. I'm not making that shit up. <laughs> I mean, w, if you if you really follow WWF, I remember there was one time where I don't remember who the two wrestlers were, but he won the championship on a non-televised event in like three seconds. <laughs> it was... They, they, and it, it was a power bomb. He kicked him, Power bombed him, and it was that was it. That was the it was won the it was it was it was, and I'm gonna tell you exactly who it was because I was a wrestling head back then. I want to say it, it was, was Diesel. It was Diesel, and he beat Bob Backlund. Uh, that's my least favorite wrestler of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Bob we Backlund. Was we my definitely least favorite wrestler we definitely should have came up with our least favorite wrestler of all time because I had a few of those. I hated Bob Lars Backlund, Steven Regal. <laughs> doink. doink. I never understood what was the point of Doink and Dink. Like, come on. <laughs> A clown, like a full dressed clown, is oh, his. Oh, oh, was this nigga a whole clown at you? Like, yeah, was this nigga? He wasn't a whole clown. He was a clown. Was this but Doink was the first Doink before he was buddy buddy. Doink was kind of like evil, like people, like he was supposed to be like an evil clown, like it. He, Doink, and he had like a little mannerisms of him that like he didn't give a shit. I kind of like that gimmick, that first Doink gimmick. I wasn't a, I wasn't a hater. I like that. I like Doink. <laughs> he wasn't my favorite. But I don't hate. I didn't hate doing. Um, WWF man, top three. Top three WWF. Number one. We could go on for all, all day with this shit. All day. So I gotta. I gotta be careful with my picks. Fuck that. Give, one, give me an honorable mention. You could even throw two honorable mentions after you finish because we love the WWF. Okay, I'm still gonna go with my number one of all time. Is I um, I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boys, number one. I'm not, my, I'm not, I'm not your boy toy. <laughs> boy toy. And then you know what? Whatever it was, the what was it? What was he? It was him and um Marty Jannetty. They were the rockers. Marty Jannetty, the rockers. I never, I don't remember that, but I know I used to get a kick out of watching that um that like scene where he did the sweet kick, chin music kick, on him and kicked kick that through dude the house, through the through the glass, <laughs> through the glass. Loved it. So uh, you know, number one, Shawn Michaels. Um, number two, you know, I really, for some reason, liked Ahmad Johnson. 
I liked Ahmad Johnson a lot. I Ron Simmons him. was Ahmad Johnson before he was Ahmad Johnson. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Ron Simmons oh, was Ahmad Johnson in the WCW. Yes. The big black dude who was slamming people and cutting up. He was the same person. And, and, and oh, I'm no. I don't, I don't mean give, he was. I'm going to give. Oh, my bad. I'm I didn't mean Ahmad he was Johnson. the actual same person. I know what you're saying. Yeah, he was yeah, that role. My um, actually, you know, I'm saying I'm my Johnson. You might be more honorable mention. I can't, you can't, you can't forget about Stone Cold and The Rock. They're like almost not fair. You know, it's almost like who other than them. So Stone Cold and The Rock. I think I really like The Rock, but like, man, I don't know. It's probably one A, one B with Stone Cold and The Rock. It's it, that's interesting and to then me. Shawn Michaels number two because I was I'm like Johnson, number three. I was like not on The Rock and them as hard because I think. I'm just a little bit older than you to the point where they were kind of... The, I was on the NWO and shit like at that point. I was watching WCW a lot more. So my favorite actually, um, like, number one of all time was Razor Ramon. Scott Hall. That was my favorite rapper. I just... He's I one of my rapper, favorite. My favorite wrestler. I, just the <laughs> fact that he used to throw a toothpick at people. Was yeah, like, yeah he, was, he was cool. He was... Like, they modeled that whole character after uh, after Tony, Tony Montana. That's what he was supposed to be, like the Tony Montana of wrestling. I mean, I wouldn't have got that as a kid, but I mean, he was he was like cool. Um, Ravishing Rick Rude because he used to be like, "Get your fat SummerSlam sweat hog ass off." Yeah, I used to like I used to, <laughs> and let me take off my robe and let you see what a real man look like. Man, he used to be trolling people, having a picture of women booty on it, like a p- women face on his ass. Like Ravishing Rick Rude was live to me. Um, and I mean, I guess the rest of them, I'm just gonna go kid shit. Um, Superfly Jimmy Snooker, um, Coco Beware, and like fucking um, Ultimate Warrior, like Ultimate Warrior is up there for me too. But I still, <laughs> I'm whenever I was like dive, I'm talking, you know, super deep into wrestling. It was Stone Cold and The Rock. So for me, when I was super deep, it was Diesel and Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. And Razor Ramon, absolutely. And I was there too. But I mean, I was fully immersed. Yeah. Like, I mean, you, and I feel like that was the, the golden age of wrestling when it was Stone Cold and The Rock. That's when wrestling was at its peak. Hey, I, we could agree to disagree on that one. I mean, Jake the Snake Robbins and shit, man, I used to like wrestling a little bit earlier in the 90s. Like, early 90s wrestling was dope to me too, though. So have you ever heard of the Attitude Age, right? I mean, you know the Attitude, attitude Age. Era, yeah. That is completely Stone Cold. Yeah, yeah. Completely I mean, no one else That was kind of cool when he was out there smashing beers together and pouring them on people's head and wilding out. Like, I, that was cool. That was and cool. sticking the bird. Yeah, yeah. Sticking the bird. Like, he had everything. He would do everything. He would curse. They started saying ass. Like, before wrestling, ass. Because they had to compete with up. WCW. WCW was whipping their ass after NWO came, went over there, dog. Like, that, that was, like, that's what I was watching. I stopped watching w, WWF. I started watching WCW because of, like, the NWO. That shit was cool. Hulk Hogan even that went over cool. there with them. Like, yep. That was, I just that didn't was, like, I just didn't like how they changed identities. I didn't like, I like, I liked Hulk Hogan where he was, uh, I am a bleed American. I like that guy. I like that <laughs> Hulk Hogan. I don't like, I don't like, dun, 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 oh, whoever he was, that little rocker dude he was with the blonde mustache, blonde and, no, and black mustache. it was a black mustache, right? It was blonde okay. and black. So let's get to a bigger point because I don't want to, I don't want to go too far without saying this. Ric Flair, we didn't mention Ric Flair. I liked Ric Flair. Um, Ric Flair said that he, during this documentary, he said he smashed 10,000 women at least in his lifetime. Whoa. Hashtag me too. <laughs> so I pulled out uh, my calculator. My calculator. That's what I pulled out. Pulled out my calculator. And I just did, I did a basic, a basic, basic, basic um, computation. I took 10,000 and I divided it by 365 days. So that means that we're um that means that Ric Flair would have had to have sex with one woman per day for twenty seven point four years. So twenty seven um years in about five months straight, one woman a night to get ten thousand. Do you think it's possible? I'm gonna give you these other caveats. He said that he started his career in nineteen seventy two. And he didn't retire until 2008, which is 36 years, which is way more years. If you watch that documentary, he said he drunk mixed drinks every day. He partied every night for 20 years straight. There was no time off. Other people was coming and saying the same thing. It was like, 
No, there wasn't a night in a city where he wasn't. He's been married like four times. He and on the documentary he was like, I'd be like faithful for one night. Then I'd go back on the road the next night and be smashing another chick. That's what Ric Flair was saying on that documentary yesterday. So with all of those factors, do we think it's possible Rick could have got ten thousand shams? If if Wilt Chamberlain smashed twenty thousand yeah. <laughs> or twenty thousand, then Ric Flair can smash ten. Absolutely. Just like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Without question. This is Ric Flair. This is the nature boy. Like, he was actually really good looking at one point in time of it yeah. in his life. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, he was like, you know, I don't know what color his hair was, but <laughs> that bleach that blonde, blonde, platinum blonde hair. the definition hair. of blonde. Like, yeah, you don't get more blonde than that. You know, it's, like his hair, his hair color didn't even really transition from like a color to gray. It just got a little bit lighter. And now he's gray. <laughs> uh, so he always had long blonde hair and he was flashy. I'm sure he had real big cars and did drinking. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I, I don't think that he had sex literally every night. I think that he... I think that over that span of 36 years, that it, let's say 40 years, because he did probably smash some hoes before <laughs> he got into the wrestling business. So let's say 40 years. If you were to do that computation, I bet you it would be a, a chick once every other day, maybe. That's, that's, that's a big stretch, because once we go once every other day, that kicks it to like 54 years. But then you got so, and and so, so he's probably still smashing hoes. And, yeah, and I think, but I, I think kind of part of it is that he um he probably counts those scenarios where it's like four chicks went back to the room with Rick Chad, Rick Flair, and he like just put the tip in here and put the tip in there. I think you got to count that if you if you got Herculean numbers if like 10, the tip 000. goes in, I smashed. Yeah, I'm thinking he got to count that. Absolutely. If I got some head, I smashed. So, <laughs> um. So, <laughs> you, was so that, what you were that guy in high school. <laughs> no, I'm not. I mean, now. I'm saying, yeah, I mean, I, I, and by smash, I'm not saying I had like I, I had sex. I had oral sex. Yeah. Okay. Um, or I received oral sex. But what I'm saying is, is it, it, it counts. Like, it's not it's not like, OK, so like if you ask me what happened and I say, man, I smashed for about 10 minutes, I'm lying. But it counts. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, it counts. I remember when I was a rapper, this podcast is brought to you by Exposure. I had a line where I said, <laughs> I said, three strokes, I'm a counter. That's the way of the streets, because three strokes is enough to tell my niggas that I beat. <laughs> that was one of my favorite lines. <laughs> Absolutely. That counts. Hey, man, it's that enough counts. to tell Let, Look, let's put, it, let's put it to you like, I'm going to put it to you like this. If, if I have a girlfriend and I receive some oral sex and my girlfriend finds out about it and I say, it's just head. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. It huh? shouldn't. It shouldn't work. <laughs> it should not work. Oh, yeah, yeah. You didn't have sex with I just pumped once. I just stuck it in like one time. It was just the tip. <laughs> it shouldn't work. <laughs> If it does, then you have a. You, you know, have the, a, you actually with the wrong one if it works. Like, like that shouldn't fly. Right. Uh, it shouldn't. I'm not going to say that, but it shouldn't fly. But anyway. All right. A couple more things. Right, Last week, uh, we talked about um, Tyrese, and then we kind of pulled up the fact that Tyrese was a little older than we thought he was, 1979. And we said that um, basic, or 78, I think 78. And we said that he his problem was that he was too old to understand how to use um, social media. So I actually saw a social media post this morning from um, one of, uh, just a guy I know. I mean, a, a guy who's a little older than me, but a guy I know, a guy I know really well. And he posted this. It was a picture of white baseball players kneeling in the 1950s to protest black lynchings. And the caption said, this archival photo re- um, reveals several white baseball players kneeling during the national anthem in protest of lynching of innocent Negroes and Jim Crow laws. The practice was quickly ended when the players realized that most of their fans were either KKK members or sympathizers. And I was like, oh, you reposted that. That's interesting. And then I went to click it and I was like, there's no way in hell that's true. And then I looked at the picture and I was like, they're just taking a team photo. 
And some people like like you know team photos they make you take when you're a little kid where some the short kids or the tall kids somebody kneels down in the front and then the other people stand up. It's just a baseball team photo. And I'm sitting here like, no, dog, that is not a real thing. And it got me to think. And I called Raj about it. And um, we started talking about that same thing with Tyrese last week, man. We need to come up with a set of rules, etiquette for old people on the med- on the internet. We need rules for old people on the internet. And we're going to give you some commandments that old people should abide by. Roger. We're gonna go back and I forth, think, and we're gonna see which ones last and which ones don't. We're gonna put we're gonna put forth the commandments today. I think the number one commandment, like commandment number one, you know how it's like the Bill of Rights, number one, freedom of speech, should be moderation. Hmm. No one wants their feed filled with the same person's posts. Hmm. So, you know, if you. <laughs> If you want, I mean, okay, yeah, you don't have to limit it to one time a day or whatnot. Just, just be, 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 be wary of how much you may be posting. Hmm. You don't want to post too much because that gets you, that gets you unfollowed. In I my got you. opinions. I'll come back with this one. It's okay to slide in DMs and not post on walls. Actually, it's preferable to send people direct messages instead of posting on people's walls. Um. But understand that screenshot did ruin the game, so you can't get caught up if you say reckless things in someone's inbox. But at the end of the day, how many times do you see old people who will like comment on a picture you put, and it'll just be something that's like, "Dog, man, you could have just sent me that personally." Like, why? Don't, like, no, I don't like that message that you just put on my page. Like, but let me okay. ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, kind of alluding to that. Do you remember when there was no such thing? Instagram had no such thing as a messenger. Exactly. It was all you had to either download something called Insta DM or download or just Insta comment chat? on somebody's picture. There was an Insta chat, I think. I don't know, but Insta DM was the big one. Like, yeah, okay. you had to have Insta DM. Uh, okay. So um my uh my my next one is um so I think the rest of them will be shameful because I think people do this and I say that's a shame that that person doesn't know how to use the internet. And I mean, that's, so what, we, you, that's what we try to help them with. Absolutely. Look, if you feel like you don't know how to use the internet and maybe we'll kind of tag some people in, the, uh, in our <laughs> posts that don't know how to use the internet. <laughs> you better hope you don't see your name. Right? But um, <laughs> man, hashtags are for popular terms. <laughs> hashtags are not for just anything. I've seen people hashtag the word the. <laughs> like, like hashtag every single word. Check, hashtag check. Hashtag out. Hashtag the. Hashtag podcast. <laughs> Come on. like only, just Only one of those words is hashtag worthy. Hashtag podcast. That's it. Check out the hashtag podcast. I think people know that. I think majority of people know that. But for the people that don't. And, and, and another thing, a hashtag doesn't work on the end of the word. So you can't just hashtag <laughs> podcast hashtag. That that does nothing for you. In fact, that might mess up the the hashtag. It might it might hyperlink the hashtag, and then now you lost what you was trying to do. Okay, I got some. Um, read this. Is just going back with what with old boys post. Read the bottom of the site before you share something, because a lot of times these sites say for parody for entertainment purposes only, just for shits and giggles, and you've posted something that made you be the person who's shit spreading fake news. So real basically, look at the bottom of the site before you share anything. I will tell you this. That's one of mine. And I'm going to actually change the verbiage up a little bit. Do research on what you post if you post something to be informative. Got you. So I want to give you an example. Yes, read the bottom. But sometimes... Just like you said, screenshots have messed up the game. I've seen a screenshot of an article. No, no, no place to click. Huh. It's just a picture. How would you find that? Well, you I'll Google tell you how it. I would. <laughs> you can Google it, but I Googled the author. And I, if I remember right, the the he, the uh, headline of the article was um, Mitt Romney uses the N word twenty nine times at a at an Alabama rally, something like that by whoever. So I 
literally searched by whoever, whoever the the artist or the uh, the writer was, and um, it was a parody site. Hmm. So be careful what you post and do research before you post something if you want to be informative. Since that, since we had the same one, I'm gonna go again. I had another one. Uh, don't okay. like, don't like, don't click on any site that says you could see a celebrity nude. Just don't do it. Or like, or some. Like, look at this video of these people having sex. Don't click it. That's how you get viruses. That's how you get your page hacked. That's why things like that happen. There's no reason you need to click that. Go to Pornhub. It's free. <laughs> it's it's free. free. It's free. You don't have to take the. You don't have to take the free tour anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> and watch a thirty second clip. <laughs> Or you can buy blacked.com for like six dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> so uh <laughs> which is the best. So anyway. Um, HD. <laughs> HD. And now there's Black Raw. Which is cool oh yeah, Black Raw, so, which is uh, less than HD, but still. <laughs> right, it's still it's B. not supposed it's to be HD. Black D. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, so um on any site, never, ever, 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 ever like your own post okay like why I'm would you like with this your own post you put it out there for like the i guess the gratification of others we know you like it because you posted it <laughs> so you if i ever see someone and they have one like and it's that person because i've seen people I know, oh, I know people that do that and you know what screw it shout out joe battle <laughs> uh, <laughs> which not nah, not which one <laughs> i'll leave it up to you guys there's whatever a few of them so uh never like your own post Oh, um, I, I, I'm going to say this. If you have 99 likes, though, I'm with you, player. You can like call, that. Your, <laughs> call your friend. Call your mama. Somebody. Something. Um, but don't, don't like your own post. So to go with that one, I'm going to add one on to that one. Don't like that bitch pictures. Because somebody's going to look at that and see that you like their pictures. They tell you. if you they, they tell you who's liking the pictures. So don't ever think that you're liking on some pictures and you're just being secretive of it. Old school. Don't like them pictures. Don't like that bitch picture. All right. So here's another thing. Be original. Hmm. Very, very vague. Very open. And what I mean by that is, by be original, is um, if you're going to repost something, you know, it's cool to use the repost app. That's fine. I'm I'm fine with giving people their just do. But let's say if you want to post a pretty cool like meme or something like that, don't get the grainy version. <laughs> like, go Google it and find the, the nice clip art version or something. You know, like find the version that don't have the grains on it. <laughs> and also, um, I forgot what I want to say, but just don't don't be original. <laughs> okay. <laughs> be I, original I, with that shit. I'll give you one right here. Um, don't take any, don't post any pictures of yourself with your shirt off, especially in the bathroom with a dirty mirror. But do not make your profile picture or any picture like you with your shirt off. Old school. You just don't need to do it. It's so what thirsty. If you, what if what if you shirt off worthy? It's a very good question. The people we're talking about are old. It's still thirsty. You can post a picture with your shirt off like at the beach, not in the bathroom at your house. That's thirsty, homie. You you disagree with that? I, a little bit. So you a so if okay, so if you were shirt off worthy, you would just be like laying in your bed, like waking up in the morning with a do rag on, like taking a picture with your shirt off, like look at me. Good morning, so young world. Things. One, I don't I don't wear do rags. And uh <laughs> two, um, maybe. <laughs> if I'm big, if I got, if I got the pecs, you know what I'm saying. You know, you, I feel like you be like you. It's easy to get arms, right? Niggas go have arms, like y'all. Everybody got arms. I can wear a, a a jersey, cool. But if you, if I got the pecs, like if I got them, you know, you, you know them titties. I'm talking about, like you got them titties. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> You know, what I'm <laughs> I don't know. Keep going. If I'm you listening. got the male, the male, I've been working out a lot for like a few year titties. I might take my shirt off in in various places. You'd like, be you'd I'll be wear. like um freaking um tiny tiny Lister and you, oh, oh what's his name um fucking you know who I'm talking about goddamn um the one who was had the sexual assault like Terry Crews. <laughs> I might. I might, man. I don't know. I can't tell you I wouldn't. So I'm, I'm, I'm with that one. Moderation. 
I only got every th- shirt. Every every single picture doesn't have to be with my shirt off. I but only got two more. And, so how many more you got? I got a few. I only got two more. One Is for me. Turn? No, no. Go ahead. It's on you. So I'm 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 real big. My my personally, I'm real big on uh, grammar. Like I've seen some words that are like spelt a certain way that um or in even spelling that are spelt a certain way that makes the word spelled even longer. <laughs> like why would you use what or even the same? Like why do I have to say T H A for the rather than T H E? Like it makes no sense. <laughs> And but cool if you if the if like the the title of it if you're trying to be kind of cool whatever but I've seen a full sentence misspelled grammatical errors galore I'm not with it. Kind of, I've actually Spell seen right. a funny one recently though. But if you do, you can misspell if it's funny. Like if it's funny and, it, and it's consistently like, funny. Like I've seen somebody recent, like famous Los. Um, he's been every time he he comments on something he's funny. He says I'm I'm C R I N E. I'm crying. crying. That's yeah, funny. I, I like that. that. The, if the pronunciation works and it's like off the wall, cool. Crying is fine to me. <laughs> That's fine to me. Or if it was crying in, like if it was C-R-Y-N-I-N, I'm cool with that because yeah. he's trying to be funny. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha, you. Got you. Know? Um. Next one I got is don't make me, don't ask me to forward anything. I'm not about to like chain email Share. nothing to nobody. Period. Y'all should already know that. You should be ashamed of yourself. Stop also, you also piggybacking on this one, this is a clause in this rule. Never um, tag me in your oh, shit. stuff. Oh, shit. Don't tag me at all. Don't tag me in your stuff. Like, I get it. You're trying to sell albums. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't tag me in your album promotion. This podcast is brought to you by Mr. Main. Stop tagging people. <laughs> cool though I'm cool with it but what I'm letting you know is that I'm going to untag my I'm going to immediately take the time immediately. to click on them to click on them three vertical dots and untag myself untag yourself At all. I don't want no notifications that people are commenting on that also going with my originality of rule this is a lot of rules this might be more than 10 by now no we probably right had like, 20, like 17 18 rules <laughs> I got I got like two left. So I we at the Best Friend Weekend podcast pride ourselves on being original and organic. Please don't be that person with 300,000 followers but you only get 65 likes <laughs> on your picture. Never buy followers. Don't do that. It speaks for itself. And last but not least this is only for one demographic, and I don't care. I'm speaking. You know who I'm. You know who I'm going to be speaking to when I say this. I think that Facebook should um, disable the middle name feature. <laughs> I don't want to know that you're too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> like not blessed. No, not blessed. Roger, blessed. Roger. I'm too. I'm too. Um. I'm. I'm. I'm too nice to have a man. The green. I saw. I saw one today. It was. Nutted in you now you're stuck with me, Jones. Like no, Bill, no, stop man, it. Shut Will, the fuck up. Will Shut nutted the fuck in you now you're stuck with me, Jones. <laughs> I saw that. Soon to be, they they got in that soon to be a couple of years ago. It was like Brittany soon to be um Jones um Williams. One more, one more. I have on one that. more too. So I'm gonna let you on finish that, it. I'm gonna give you. Oh yeah, you let finish me finish because because yours may be more epic than mine. But no, I've it's definitely not. It's seen not epic some, at all. Go ahead. No. I've seen some joint Facebook pages where the middle name is N. Right? Have you seen this before? I N. So it, no N. The letter N. Oh. Like as to say and. Yeah. They're not gonna let you put and. So it'll be Roger and Al. <laughs> And that's because my first name's Roger, my middle name is N, and then you know Nancy or Nicole or I don't know. You're not with the shit when it comes to that one. No, <laughs> you can't have a joint. Don't no 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 joint account. Get you some separate stuff. I, the last one I had is just don't ask me to play that game. I don't I don't want notifications to play Candy Crush, and it's not Candy Crush. It's whatever it is. It's um, 
It's 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 detective Form, Farmville. It's Farmville. I just don't ask me to do none of that shit. I don't want it. I don't need it. When I get notifications, I expect somebody has liked something I have done. Somebody has commented on something that I have done. I don't expect for that kind of foolishness, and I hate it. And I need to start um, unliking certain pages that I think I like because I get every post that they make. But like our shit because you know. You want to be informed when the best friend weekend is doing things, um, and all of these rules apply to us too. So you don't have to worry about us tagging you. We're not gonna ask you for nothing. We're not gonna be all in the videos per se. All on the radio. If you want one day, come to best friend weekend podcast. Um. So just leaving it out. I'm gonna get to nothing nice to say in a second, but let me give you our um, weekly Me Too report. People who were accused of Me Too in this week: Louis C.K. They said he was um he has a history of like having other young women comedians at his room and then standing in front of the door won't let him leave and then beat that wood. Um Charlie Sheen allegedly um molested or something, Corey Haim. Corey of the Corys of the young rat pack who was in like everything, um what were they in the Lost Boys and everything, but during the Lucas movie in whenever, so that's an allegation as well. And Mariah Carey, her um her bodyguard said that like she lured him into the room and she was standing there with a sheer dress with nothing on underneath. And then when he tried to leave, she kept trying to make him not leave and then he left. But he really suing her for like $200,000 as well of unpaid money. So those are our weekly people who have been added to the Me Too report. Any of those surprises? And I want to tell you that Mariah Carey can Me Too me anytime she wants. <laughs> and homeboy is a whole whole. A whole whole at you. Oh, unless he married. I'll give him that. If you're that guy, if you're married, I'm good with it. And like, I get it. But if he's not married, yo. He's white. Maybe he was like, I don't want Nick Cannon's sloppy nigger leftovers. Maybe he did say that. <laughs> take Nick Cannon's sloppy nigger leftovers. <laughs> Man, cue up that music for nothing nice to say. You know, they say if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Nothing nice, nice to say, but I'll go nice. Listen, every time I have something nice to say about the city that I live in, they embarrass me again. Over the last two months of podcasts, and I came out and said, the Astros have always been my favorite baseball team. I admitted that James Harden has secretly crept into the top three for coolest, best basketball players on the planet. And I even said Deshaun Watson was going to be the next big star in football. But then when, then when he went down... Told that old ACL. And you know what? I know the feeling. It's happened to me before. So let's wish this young brother good fortune. But when he went down, Houston had the opportunity to climb up to my solid number one city outside of the state of Louisiana. And they fucked it up. All they had to do was keep quiet and do smart things. Instead, y'all slave driver ass owner Bob McNair called every nigga in the league inmates. Started a whole bunch of shit that didn't need to happen. Dug you guys into a huge hole, which he could have came out. He almost could have. He absolutely could have came out of this bitch smelling like roses. Just like if Trump could fuck up the entire country. But if he decided next week, I'm going to legalize weed. People would instantly fuck with him. McNair had a slam dunk play that he could have ran just like that, but he chose not to make the call. Signed Cap. It's that damn easy. Sign Colin Kaepernick. The AFC South is ass. It's always been ass. You're trying to beat Blake Bortles, flimsy-ass Marcus Mariota, and Jacoby Brissett. you two games back, and you go with this garbage-ass quarterback that you benched after watching him for 30 minutes in week one. Then you sign a bunch of other retreads and fuckboys instead of signing a guy who was Deshaun Watson before Deshaun Watson was Deshaun Watson. Let me tell you this, Houston fans. I don't know how much you fuck with your team, but I fuck with the Saints. Heavy. 20 shirts, 5 jerseys, backpacks, fucking lawn gnomes, slippers, beanies, caps, wristbands, jackets, nigga, scarves. Nigga, I got a Saints tattoo. I invest a lot in my team because I love watching football and I love rooting for my home team and wanting them to win. But ask yourself this. Are them some of my bitches at Reliance Center doing any of that for you? Are they trying to make your team win? Look, I live in Houston. So I got to go to work with, shoot ball with, play cards with cats who love the Texans. But I got to ask, why the hell you would support a team who gives zero fucks about winning? Or better yet, gives 
all the fucks about perpetuating white supremacy, police brutality, and outright racism against a man who stands up for social justice. But hey, <laughs> get your fucking Tom Savage jersey and watch the Texans on Sunday because I don't have nothing nice to say. So I won't say nothing at all. Hey, Raj, we up over the hour and some time, Mark. Um, woo. This time next week, I'm going to be um, styling at homecoming. It. Styling and profiling. That's what I'm going to be doing. What you, yeah, it's styling and profiling. I'm going to be styling me. and profiling. <laughs> here's my, here's my, here's, now before I let y'all leave, my number one best Ric Flair thing of all time is 100% he was slapping them niggas in the chest as hard as he could. <laughs> Oh, Every on that time. documentary, him and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was talking about when they played against each other, them boys was actually slapping the shit out of each other. <laughs> they was like... <laughs> like, them niggas' chest was red. After yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. They was like, that's nothing you're going to really get hurt from. So we were slapping each other hard as we could so everybody could hear that shit. <laughs> that's live. Cut. Um, but shit, um, next week, I'm going to be at Xavier Homecoming. We're doing a live Homecoming podcast. I mean, I guess every homecoming is pod- alive, but we're gonna. I mean, every podcast is alive, but we're gonna do a um, podcast from homecoming. So, a bunch of old cats. We're gonna talk about black homecomings and um, just homecomings in general for colleges and how we even have a homecoming with no football team. We'll talk a lot about that next week. And um, anything else you got for us, Raj? No. I hope, well, I uh, hope homecoming is fun. <laughs> I hope that you're. I hope it's full of homecoming on your face. But anyway, just, <laughs> I, hope, I hope nobody home comes over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we get out of here, though, um, this podcast is brought to you by Nesto DP, our favorite, 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 favorite rapper in Panama. Um, I had an opportunity when we was out there in Panama to kick the shoot the shit with the dude, real cool guy. He sent us some new music to break. He gave us three new songs. I picked the one that don't have no English at all. It's that Medicinas. It's the Medicinas, Roger. Metacena, seba, 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 yeah, you know it. <laughs> That's not how it him. sounds. That's not him? It's funny. It's funny because they're Panamanians, but they black. They just like we black. They like dark skin, like our skin color black. So the fact is, they get out there and it's going to sound like hip hop. Just they talk in Spanish. That's the song I like the most. Something, something, Metacena. Now you got me saying it. That's not how it sounds. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Un that's the one gasolina no that's gasolina yeah, yeah. so um instead of instead of the regular doty smoke outro we're going with the everything green outro man holla at my boy nesto at nesto underscore dp i think that's what it is i'm gonna tag him in this let's get it popping man see y'all next week shout out Cocaína, weed, that's the codeína Ficalilla, tengo caso todos los días Ex malitus y tengo toda la pastilla 24-7 pasa por tu medicina Y cocaína, weed, that's the codeína Ficalilla, tengo caso todos los días Ex malitus y tengo todas las pastillas 24-7 pasa por tu medicina Y Tú quieres saber la razón por la cual soy un gangster. Grande de deuda yo tengo en mi usa pamper. Siempre en la calle frenteo porque no soy hamster. No quiero tiro chiquito, yo quiero lo grande. Porque yo tengo una gla, tú me vas a preguntar. Tú no estás viendo la vaina que me quieren matar. Hay muchos amigos de la gente que quieren lo tuyo. Cuando vienen en contra de mí, eso bueno le huyo. ¿Qué voy a hacer con la plata? ¿Qué voy a hacer con la plata? Dime tú qué prefieres, mi es más que ustedes. Si desnuda se vende, si se suma se prende. OG Kush pa' la mente, y baby, es mi arete. Tú ves que lo que se mueve, todo el equipo brilla. Si no tiene pa' la mesa, pues no tiene silla. Dime quieres o no quieres, este es mi esquina. Manda la plata, homie, pilla y deja la guilla. Cocaína, weed, hace codeína. Ficalilla, tengo caso todos los días. Ex mal y tú si tengo toda la pastilla. 24-7 pasa por tu medicina y cocaína. Cuida, se codeína. Ficalilla, tengo caso todos los días. Ex mal y tú si tengo todas las pastillas. 24-7 pasa por tu medicina. Ey. Got more green than the nature. Fuck with me, I'm a blesser. Yeah, my weed is the best, and my prices is lesser. Made it feel like an Irma. They remember Katrina in the back of the Bentley with two bitches that friendly. Cause they know that I'm getting it. Panama. T-
Till then.